You know, I, I think when I was young, it wasn't really someone famous. Um, I had some relatives who uh, took a lot of pictures. My grandmother, for one, took a lot of pictures. And um, I, I would see the results and say, I want to do that. And then my parents gave me a um, Polaroid camera when I was very young, maybe about six or seven. as a swinger. It was called the swinger. And um, I just started shooting family photos and then friends and then landscapes and all that. But as I grew up and began to really appreciate photography, it was certainly um, um, James Van Der Zee, he's a great Harlem Renaissance photographer. Um, Annie Leibovitz, who uh, is yes. just, you know, beyond brilliant. Um, Gordon Parks, of course. And um, uh, right now, I'm really admiring the work of uh, a lot of my friends who work at newspapers and magazines. Uh, there's a guy, Darian Davis, I've worked with on um, some cover shoots for my own stories. Mm -hmm. And um, Kirk McCoy, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer at the LA Times, and then the guy who just helps me tremendously, uh, technically and visually, uh, his name is Leroy Hamilton, and uh, he teaches me a lot about light every single day, you know, um, because I'm the kind of person who can walk outside and not really see the light where it's hitting mm -hmm. sometimes. I have to stop and make myself think because I'm so quick to want to get the picture and I'm like oh and then you see it and there's like this huge shadow across someone's face that you know doesn't look so pleasant but yeah I'm still learning and you know it's, it's been an incredible ride. Um, well you know I, I took a lot of pictures as a kid but I never thought it would go anywhere you know it's just something I enjoyed. And then when I got to college, um, I needed an elective course and, um, you know, I took photography and the funny story about that is I saved up all this money to buy a camera, the camera of my dreams, which at that time was a Minolta uh, SRT 202. And I had the money in my desk drawer and one night some friends came in and I had to go out for a minute and they stole my money. You know, yeah, they stole my money and I had to wait like another three months to buy the camera to save up enough to buy the camera, which was unfortunate. But um, I took that class and I really honestly wasn't very good. Um, and uh, I think I ended up getting a uh, C, maybe a B minus. Um, but, you know, I think I wasn't really focused, you know, really still wasn't where my interest was. But um, when I got out of college, um, I had the opportunity to work at a newspaper and I just became fascinated with the photographers. I wanted to be them. Okay. You know, I didn't want to write as much. I wanted to take pictures and of course they wouldn't let you because of union rules. And then when I went to graduate school, I had the opportunity to study with one of the original life photographers, a guy named Eugene Cook. And uh, we used to have class at his house in Brookline and he would have tea and cookies for us, and or biscuits as he would call them, and uh, we'd sit there and talk about, you know, photography, and he'd share his work with us, and, um, you know, work of other people, like uh, Margaret Burke White, who's another favorite photographer of mine, um, and um, Eugene Smith, who was a friend of his, who also worked at Life, so um, that, that really started to inspire me. And after that, I started shooting all the time, but then I dropped it again and, you know, lost my eye for a little while. But then um, I was working at ESPN and my show got canceled. I was like, what to do? What to do? And I picked up the camera again and just started shooting. And that's initially where the idea for my book came during that period. So. I like things that are really off center. You know, so um, when I'm framing, I kind of, like if I were framing you, I kind of like leave space, like a lot of space on the right side, and then maybe go there and back. Um, but, you know, you just kind of look, you, you just kind of visualize where the heart is, where the soul is in the photograph. You know, it could be your nose, it could be your lips. You know, it could be your fingers right there. Um, it could be that little tattoo you have on your finger. Um, so whatever strikes me at the time is kind of what I focus on. Ah, um, you know, that's, 
I think the thing I would tell them is just um, follow your passion. You know, because sometimes your passion will lead you to greater heights than any educational course you could ever take. Um, I haven't taken a lot of photography courses, um, and I, I think that's an advantage in a way because you know, once you study something for so long, you kind of get trapped in it a little bit, and it kind of it can stifle your creativity. I think actors will tell you the same thing, um, and artists, visual artists. So I would say, you know, just key in on your passion, focus, and keep shooting. You know, the longer you shoot, the more you shoot, the better you're going to get. Honestly, this is the first time I've seen it, and I'm blown away. I think this is fabulous work, which I wish I had shot. I mean, um, this, the thing with the feet here is just amazing. It's just amazing. Um, and I think what strikes me about this work is that I can feel it. You know, she, she has put me there with her while she's taking this. And that's what you want to do as, certainly as a writer, but as a photographer as well. And so I can feel um, the emotion um, in this shot and especially here um, the woman with the uh, barrel of the gun I mean it's like wow and it, 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 it's I'm trying to figure out what it's what she's trying to say as opposed to what I'm thinking so that's what you want to do with your work um, you know you want to keep people guessing and you know get them to wonder why so she's done a very good job of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to figure out what this says. Yeah. <laughs> but that won't be happening, so uh, yeah. it'd, be, it'd be great to know what that actually said. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she was that girl that was on that show, right? Yes. Yeah, the blonde one. All right, yeah, yeah I remember her. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it kind of started in 2006 when I found myself suddenly unemployed. Um, and at first, the book was called Journey to the Woman. Um, Wait a minute, I get, it, I get it confused. It was called Journey to the Woman, Woman I Will Become. And the premise behind it was that at around 36, women start to really feel comfortable in their skins and don't care what people think about them and you know, just start to be very positive and focused about who they are. And um, I asked, initially I asked a lot of questions, um, but then as the book went on and I picked it back up again in 09 um, or late 08 actually um, I thought well maybe I could streamline this a little bit but I didn't and so I just kept doing these mammoth interviews with all these people and what I wanted to do was get a collection of women who were all 35 and older um, from all different walks of life and sort of compare and contrast their experiences. And what I found out was that basically, even though we have different journeys and come from different places, um, all women basically want the same thing. And they were all saying the same thing, except in different ways. So what happened was, as I started to get further into it and people started signing on, because um, everyone suddenly wanted to be a part of it, um, I decided to just focus on the photography aspect of it and try to get great shots of people and then limit the interview to one question and that one question is at what point did you fall in love with yourself and once I did that I said well maybe I need to change the title of the book too and that's when I changed it to journey to the woman I have come to love you know, because it's all about evolving into a spot where you really just fully love yourself. Now, it's interesting, um, I just asked Angelina Jolie this question yesterday, and, you know, granted it wasn't in a really proper setting for her to go 
get really deep about it, but she said, you know, first she said, you know, I don't think we ever really do, do we? And I said, you know, you haven't gotten to that point? And then she said, well, I think I got to that point as a parent. And then she went on and said, you know, whatever she said, because I don't remember, honestly. Uh, but I find a lot of people her age, like between that 35 and 42 age range, um, who are mothers of younger children, they all kind of say that. I find that older women, um, particularly older African American women, said that, say that they've always loved themselves because their fathers told them that they were the most special human being on the planet. There have been two or three people who have told me that. Um, I find that actresses um, probably have the most intriguing responses because a lot of them, like Sharon Gless, um, sort of, uh, how can I say, um, their, their self-worth is sort of, sort of um, all about, you know, what they look like, the exterior, like their weight, and, you know, if they've got wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they really kind of are kind of all over the board. Um, what the book is missing right now is um, I haven't been able to tap into the Asian community like I wanted to. I have a couple people that I, I know I'm going to shoot, but they live out of town, mm -hmm. and I just haven't gotten them. But, you know, Vera Wang, if you're out there, holla at me, trying to get to you. Um, and Joan Chen, I would love to do, Amy Tan, and then my friend here suggested a couple of Asian actresses that I'm going to definitely look at. So. Uh, it's coming along. I hope to be done with it by the end of the year. It's been um, very gratifying for me as a photographer and as a writer. And um, I think the people in it will really be pleased with the outcome. And I think you know other women who are trying, to, who are searching for themselves, trying to find themselves, will be inspired by it as well. So that's the that's the hope.